to, an, uh, to the identical disease, uh, which will be presented by Dr. Filip Wojniewski, who comes, uh, despite his Polish name, as mine is, uh, from Paris, France. And uh, he will tell us about a different approach to, uh, in, 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 a, in a similar setup. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Zielinski. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to, to present the results of another study in the same disease, indeed, those patients with mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors. Those tumors come from the small bowel and the right part of the colon. And this treatment used lutetium dotatate uh, isotope, which improves progression-free survival in those patients. That will I show you. Sorry, because I changed something. Okay, it hasn't been changed. Um, as Dr. Yao just alluded to, this uh, group of NED patient is heterogeneous, and uh, they are very special because those tumors may remain silent for months and poses very difficult diagnostic problems. Despite the fact that they are very rare in terms of incidence, and as you can see here from a work that was performed by James Yao, this incidence is really increasing in the recent decades. This is the, the, the red curve, which is now five for 100,000 people, while as you can see in the same time period, the incidence of all cancers did not increase so much. And this is probably because diagnosis is now more accurate. So sorry, coming back to what I just said before, this is a prevalent disease, as you can see, although the incidence is low, but increased a lot. The problem we have, especially for patients with mid-gut tumors, is that we have very few treatment options, despite the fact that we just heard one new option. But up to now, this patient, even at the metastatic stage, cannot be treated with chemotherapy, external beam radiotherapy, this does not work. Somatostatin analogs can be useful at the very beginning, but at some time point, we are without any treatment. And we know that this peptide receptor radiotherapy using uh, ludotatate has given, in an investigational driven uh, study, very promising results. So, what is the principle of this, it's uh, an agent that is injected by systemic root, and as you can see on the right part, you have both uh, here a peptide, which is octreotide. Octreotide has receptors, or somatostatin, octreotide is a somatostatin analog, somatostatin has receptors on the membrane cell surface and binds to the tumor cells. The radionuclide, which, which is 177 lu.8, is bound to octreotide via a, chelate, a chelating agent, and this binds specifically, or rather specifically, to the neuroendocrine tumor cell because it targets somatostatin receptor. So, lutate is injected in the patient vein, it reaches the tumor cells, it binds to the somatostatin receptor on the cell membrane, is then internalized in the tumor cell, and delivers radiation within the cancer cell, leading to uh, cellular damage and DNA uh, destruction. In the study that we performed in almost 230 patients, half received <coughs> lutate, the other half received octreotide LAR at a, the high dosage of 60 milligram every 28 days. In the lutate arm, patients receive also octreotide at the current dosage of 30 milligrams to control their symptoms. And you have here the major result of this study, which is a big difference, as you can see, in progression-free survival. It was 8.4 months in the octreotide arm, and it was not reached in the 
do, do not attain arm. This corresponds to a hazard ratio of 0 0.209, or in other words, in a, reduction, in a risk reduction of almost 80% in a tumor progression. May we see tumor shrinkage with such a treatment, which is not observed with the other types of treatment? We knew from the phase one, two study that it was possible, and this is confirmed by the present study, although I must uh, stress the fact that we just evaluate the patients who, of course, are currently available. The study is still in progress. But we can already say that 19% of the patient did experience an objective response according to RESIS criteria, while this was only 3% in the control arm with uh, octreotide 60. Uh, progressive disease was very rare, and tumor control was obtained in 95% of the patient in the lutatate arm versus uh, 76 in the control arm. Finally, exactly uh, as you saw in the previous presentation, we performed an interim analysis of overall survival, but I think this is a little bit too early, and it is not yet significant because this value of 0 0.01 is below the threshold that was uh, fixed before the study, but the studies are ongoing. There is a trend, uh, and we will see what will, will happen later on. Safety was not a big issue, and uh, by the way, uh, the, the safety data, which are also uh, being uh, now uh, uh, still, uh, of course, uh, completed in the study, uh, were as we expected. Few patients, seven of uh, them, experienced uh, blood toxicity with thrombopenia and neutropenia in some rare cases. Three patients experienced renal and urinary disorders, especially with one patient who got a renal failure, and one patient had a portal hypertension, probably not related to the treatment. So I think we can conclude that uh, in patients with progressive metastatic mid-gut nets, Lou Dotatate was superior to octreotide 60 in terms of progression-free survival and objective response rate. It might be that uh, it can also be associated with increased overall survival, and uh, this is to be confirmed. Uh, we can confirm also the fact that uh, the safety profile is good with few uh, severe side effects. And I really think that this new concept, which is now demonstrated, uh, we needed this first prospective control study because the uh, investigator-driven studies, which treated more than 1,000 patients, were, of course, not controlled. We have now, I think, reasonable evidence that uh, this is a major advance in the population of patients with progressive mid-gut nets. Thank you very much.